This video is about gears. Now, you've seen them before, they're practically the symbol of engineering. Except, is this what they really look like? Would you expect these sharp edges to run without grinding? Well, this is the shape of a real gear. How can you tell? Well, first, at least the edges are curved. But the best way to check is to see it in action, it runs smoothly without interference. If you take a closer look, the tooth profile is specifically designed so that they slide over each other perfectly. And in this video I'll show you how it works. The tooth profile follows the involute curve. The involute is defined as the function drawn by the end of a string as it unwinds from a circle. Here's the formula for the involute. You have an x and y component of the function depending on the input angle phi. The curve is defined in two parts, the first part is a circle with the radius r. The second part is a tangent vector and its length is equal to the arc length of the base circle corresponding to the angle phi. Now for this next step, I'll draw the involute in a rotating perspective. It's like unwinding a string from a winch. Note that the involute curve is the same as before, it just rotates together with its base circle. Next, let's draw another one, connected to the first one. Now you have something like a belt drive. Thanks to the connection, the ratio of their rotation is constant and proportional to the radii. In a sense, we've achieved ideal gearing. Now let's draw the involute curves for both base circles. The curves touch in one common point in the middle and slide over each other as they turn. These curves could be pushing on each other and achieve the same motion as if the string were pulling the winches. An important property of this setup is that the involutes are always perpendicular to the string. You can see it from the way they are drawn by the string. And since both curves are perpendicular to the string, they are tangential to each other so they can slide freely at any point on the string. Furthermore, the distance between the axes can be arbitrary. If you move them closer or further apart, the involute doesn't change. Only the point of contact changes on the involute. Also note how the string connection is the same. The ratio of the angular velocity remains the same regardless of the axial distance. Now, let's quickly go through how all this relates to gears. Here you have the base circle, which defines the starting radii of the involute curves. Then here are the involute curves defining the teeth. Up top you have the addendum, down you have the dedendum, and in the middle you have the pitch circle. Two gears can mesh when their pitch circles touch. We don't have the string anymore, instead what we have is the line of action. The contact point between gears will always lie on the line of action, which is tangent to the base circles. The angle of the line of action relative to the tangent at the pitch circle is called the pressure angle. The pitch is the arc length on the pitch circle between two teeth. The pitch defines the repeating pattern of the gear teeth. And then the module is the pitch divided by pi. Now the module makes gears uh, modular, I guess. Here's how. The pitch is pi times the module. The addendum, the tooth height above the pitch circle, is usually equal to the module. The dedendum is usually 1.2 times the module for leaving a bit of clearance. If you add up the pitch length for each tooth, you get the whole pitch circle. The total circumference is pi times the pitch diameter, and after rearranging the diameter is module times the number of teeth. Now let's add another gear. Since the pitch circles touch, the axial distance equals to the sum of pitch radii, 
which becomes the module times Z1 plus Z2 over 2. Thanks to this module system, any size gear can mesh with any other, as long as they have the same module and pitch angle. But since the pitch angle is standardized to be 20 degree, all you need to think about is the module. The way you can visualize it is that every gear is made to be compatible with a rack, and the rack has a certain module and pitch angle. Anytime compatible gears mesh, you can put an imaginary rack profile between them. This will always be true, because this is how gears are made. They are cut with a rack-shaped uh, cutting tool. Take a look. To summarize, involute gears, well, first, run smoothly with constant transmission ratio. Second, they are compatible with any size as long as the module is the same. And third, they tolerant to small changes in axial distance. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.